In this video, I turn this into this. It's a game made completely of particle physics. How did I do it? In the past two videos, I set out to code a physics engine because I'm insecure about my intelligence and need external validation. Now, as with all coping mechanisms, the results were mediocre and it only made the problem worse. Like, what did I tell you guys at the end of the last video? I swear, if I see a single comment saying this looks like diarrhea, I'm committing a war crime. And what do I see? 50,000 comments saying exactly that. Words cannot describe my distaste for my audience, but to be fair, I haven't really succeeded in making any of the simulations I said I would. And this is mainly due to two reasons. Number one, well, my incompetence. I made the soft body and the fluid using completely unrelated code, and as a result, they couldn't interact with each other. And number two, the simulations seem to have certain World War II tendencies which experts in the field refer to as an unstable integration scheme. Some words which I'd maybe understand if I didn't, you know, drop out of school back in 2017 to be a cryptocurrency guru. Thankfully, good artists copy, great artists steal, as the giant skeleton from Clash Royale once said. Some guy from NVIDIA already figured out how to fix those two issues back in 2014. We're borderline at the cutting edge forefront of academia, so wise. So essentially this paper they published uses a method called position-based dynamics to make a unified system for all types of simulations that never blows up and runs in real time and makes me look real capable which fits our purpose of making a real-time video game application. Now, sure, the paper may be only 12 pages, but I can't be certain it's gonna leave me with that many brain cells remaining after I try to implement it, because now I have to abandon all the progress that I've made in the past two videos, and pretty much do everything in a much more advanced way. It's kind of like building your first Minecraft house with wooden planks, but then halfway through you see some guy's one-to-one -one recreation of the Taj Mahal on YouTube and having your self-esteem hurt so bad that you have to embark on the destructive journey of recreating it. Guess where we're back at? That's right, square one. I wonder if I can get some financial support for this endeavor. I do have a friend who got rich off of illegal trading on Minecraft Hypixel. <laughs> Hello Mr. Fold, how are you doing? So I've got this idea for a video game that might interest you. I, I really think it's the next big thing. Really? Honestly, your other projects seem kind of sketchy, man. I don't see how an indie game, especially made by you, is going to make any profitable return in this saturated market. Okay, look, this one's different. This game is going to use a real-time particle, physically based and environment, infinitely replayable procedural. It'll be revolutionary. It's, it's nothing the world has ever seen before. All right, but you know the market moves fast. The important thing is, how long will it take you? Uh, okay, look, 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 Steve Jobs. Didn't come up with the iPhone in a day, right? Did you just compare yourself to Steve Jobs? Well, I mean, nah, more like Jesus. Okay, look, but I still have 2,000 Dogecoin left. I'll send it over, just don't let it be garbage. So now, with financial incentive on the line and a whole new budget, my level of motivation for this endeavor was on a different level. It was time to spend the next month of my life tearing my hair out over some guy's PhD thesis. I've never felt the warmth of a woman's touch, but at least I know how to solve a constrained optimization problem using Newtonian iteration. I need therapy, but at least I have a working particle simulation system. Look how nice this is. We got a working tofu, we got a working liquid. Okay, the liquid's running at two frames a second. So yeah, if you thought the struggles were gonna end there, think again, we're rewriting the whole goddamn thing in OpenCL. If you wanna have a good picture of the deterioration of my mind while I was going through this whole ordeal, you can check the GitHub commit history in the repository. That's always an accurate reflection of what's going on in the mind of any demented psychopath, of any software engineer in the spirit of the moment. If you're actually interested in the code I wrote, I'll leave a link to the repository in the description. But anyway, OpenCL, what is it? Basically your CPU, like an Intel i5, has maybe four, maybe eight cores. They're good at doing a small number of very complicated things. But your GPU, like the NVIDIA GTX 1650 that I have, has 896 CUDA cores, which are good at doing a large number of simple things. Now we got thousands of particles in the game, a GPU is gonna speed that up tremendously. We can do that in OpenCL because OpenCL provides a standard interface for parallel computing using task and database. I don't know what that means. I'm just doing it so I can put big words on my resume so I can hopefully eventually get a job. Now that we've got the physics actually working, 
I can wait for my hairline to recover and actually get to work on the game. Now, I was having a really hard time thinking of what game to make with these physics until I came across this video of some guy wearing a Red Bull suit kayaking through what you technically call a river, but for which a more fitting name would be a near-death situation. Seriously, how do people have the balls to do this stuff? Well, I know you don't, given that you're watching this video, so instead we could live vicariously through this game I'm about to make. So first we gotta add a soft body. Okay, there we got one. And then add some water. Eye is splashing around. And then we need to make an entire river using millions and millions of particles, pretty much like blowing up the computer of whoever tries to run this thing. Is what you'd say if your brain was small. You see, we don't do that here. We use a little something called lies and deception. If the player can only see one part of the river at a time, we only simulate one part of the river at a time. Matter of fact, what we can do is get the gravity to go to the side a little bit, and then with a little bit of a big brain code, have the same chunk of water just flowing in the same direction, but looping around forever, kind of like a treadmill. Then we make the particles a different color, and then put them in the shape of a spike. You know what I call that? Gameplay. Essentially, you can move the ball left and right, allowing it to dodge the spikes and continue to move forward. But the visible region also continues to move forward. And if you bump into, you know, one too many spikes and you get bumped out of that visible region, game over, you lose. So now, with a finished game, I was ready to send it over to my investor, Mr. Fold, for a test demo, being quite positive that he'll really like it. Wait, did you not like it? Seriously, that's all you could do in two months? There's like no gameplay at all. It's basically tempo run from Walmart, but way slower. But you don't, don't you understand? It's the, it's the particles, it's the simulation, it's the, it's the physics and- Look man, that's not what people want when they want to play games. People play for objectives, constraints, decision making, satisfying feedback, surprises, that sort of stuff. Spending so much time on mechanics before figuring out the gameplay is like being a YouTuber and worrying about what camera to buy before figuring out actual good content to cover. But yeah, what did you do with that 2000 Dogecoin? Well, you know, it went in the budget. Yeah, but how though? What did you spend it on? I, uh, I used it to buy NFTs. Alright guys, I didn't actually make it into a game because, as Fold said, there's just no gameplay. The whole project was planned around the physics, so now all you can do is literally just move a ball around, and half your computers wouldn't be able to run this anyway. Pretty much, I'm good enough at coding to make a simulation, but not good enough to make an optimized one. So the demo with just the physics is up on GitHub, link in description, but there's no menus or scoring system or background music, death screen, anything like that. It's just the physics. I'll put the code under the open source MIT license so you can have a look if you're interested, or maybe even use the code yourself. But this will probably be the last video about computational physics because it's just not good for entertainment or education. With entertainment, 80% of the effort is just spent writing code, trying to fix bugs, improve performance. Really with nothing to show for it in the video, and that's why this video took like 2 months to make. And then for education, as you go past literally the surface of this field of study, even with slightly advanced stuff, there's just no point teaching about it in a video because it requires understanding of so many topics like computer algorithms, linear algebra, calculus, numerical methods. My first couple videos were literally about the simplest simulations there are, and still, most viewers didn't understand anything. So if you're serious about learning this stuff, you'd be better off just reading academic papers. Like if you want to learn how to code a rigid body, just go to Google, type rigid body simulation, file type, colon, PDF. And then that comes up with all the academic papers and then read the paper and then type the title of the paper into GitHub and then see if there's anyone who's done an implementation of that paper who's willing to share their code. That's pretty much how I learned all this stuff by myself, just by reading papers and reading other people's code on GitHub. But anyways, I hope you liked the video and until next time.